Uh, the big news as far as English cricket is concerned today, though, is that Ben Stokes is going to be part of the Ashes squad. He's been given the all clear after taking a break in the summer to recover from a broken finger and to prioritise his mental well-being. I, I suppose the... The most important thing here, Paul, just for, for, we'll talk about him as an individual shortly, but from the England team perspective, and I heard you talk about this on Five Life Sport on Saturday afternoon, is all of a sudden they've got their balance back with him. Absolutely. And and that is the most important thing. All, all the way through this summer, every time England have picked a team, I mean, Jack Leach probably has been the guy that's missed out most of all because every time England have picked a team, they've tried to balance a team that hasn't had Ben Stokes in it. And, you know, we were so fortunate a lot of the time um, that I was involved with the England team, we had Ben available. And, and it's it's a three-in-one player. He brings you so many options. He brings other people into the game. It means you can play one less seamer. It more, ways, more often than not, you can play two spinners. It means you play one less batter, but he's catching, his intensity brings to the team. He just brings so much to the team. It, it, he really does. And, you know, Joe Root, Chris Silverwood will be absolutely delighted to have him back in the fold, as will the rest of the team. And, and his just his sheer presence in that England team, in the dressing room, in Australia, will add so much to England's chances now. I, I think it's really tipped the series back into being a fantastic series, and I'm pretty excited about it now. All of a sudden, Carlos, there are there are options for England, are they? They can go in different directions now, depending on conditions, form, t- t- injuries, whatever it may be. As long as he is is fit and able to participate fully, yeah, um, just happy for him. Um, firstly, to see the bravery uh, to take time off, being the linchpin um, and the talisman for England that he has been for so many years. Um, you can sometimes feel a bit guilty to step away and be a bit, for lack of a better word, selfish to prioritise your mental health as he did. Um, so for him to do that was um, extremely brave. And for him to come back now on the eve of the ashes, regardless of what he gives on the field, which is a, a hell of a lot, um, one thing that I think that will do is galvanise that squad. Um, the bravery to step away and the bravery to step back just before what is the most important um, series in the English calendar. Um, there will be a lot of boys in there. And there are a lot of boys. The team is kind of in transition, especially with the bat. Mm. Um, and if you need anything in Australia, it is resilience. Um, and Ben Stokes would bring a lot of that with his story, um, with what he's just been through. And then his obvious quality on the field and his leadership in the dressing room. Um, I think I would... But have said for Australia 5 0. Um, with Stokes is a bit of a chance for it to be 4 1. But with everything. <laughs> <laughs> you were going so well to that point, Carlos. Just, I've just so given well. the opportunity to meet you Micah. Can't keep using Carlos. Five nil. Meet you Micah can't keep talking about it. You, throw that, you throw that back at us. <laughs> nah, it was always going to be a difficult it was going to be a difficult trip down in Australia, um, bubble life. Um, but with with Ben back and you know, with what I think he'll do off the field with his story and what he's gone through. I think it'll bring the best out of a lot of the young players um, that may have been found wanting if he weren't there and if he hadn't stepped up to the plate. So I'm very happy to see um, that a fellow professional not only had, had the bravery to step away from the game, um, but now has the courage to step back in. Uh, it was a pivotal moment in the, in the calendar for, for England. I think he used an interesting word there, Carlos did, Paul, of, of, of it will galvanise England. And it, it feels like, I don't know, after that final India test was cancelled and huge doubts about whether the Ashes would go ahead and if they would go ahead, how many of England's first choice players would actually go because depending on the COVID restrictions and families and so on and so forth. And in the space of a fairly, you know, in a, a fairly short space of time, Lots of things have have happened that could galvanise England. 
Absolutely. And I think, you know, Joss Butler's decision, you know, there was a lot made of the, the, the fact that Joss might not go. He is also a huge player. And, 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 and I know that he might not have scored the runs recently, but his personality, his way of being around the England team brings so much to him. Joe Root wants him in his team. He's now got his two people that he would most want at his side for this Ashes series. You know, to have Ben back in the side, and Carlos is right, forget the cricket side of it. You know, Ben has made a hugely brave decision decision personally and you know he's he's dealt without the England team you know I think Ashley Giles Chris Silverwood have done a brilliant job they've allowed him time space they've talked about there's no rush he can come back when he's ready but the fact that he's now back in the group Joss Butler back in the group I think it really will galvanize this England team and I I I, I was nervous of how they might go down we, we didn't have Ben last time we missed him we missed his personality in the big moments of the game we didn't have him now to have him in the side this time I think will really pull the group together and and he is forget what he does on the field the way that he is around the dressing room the way that he is as a person and and he's a very very good person to have in that dressing room and he brings a lot of confidence he brings a lot of calmness we saw what he did in the final with Joffre you know the way that he spoke to Joffre before that super over he does that day in day out he doesn't think twice about it that's how he behaves around that team and he is such an important player to have in that team in such a big series um this is what he said in his column in the mirror ben stokes i was in a real dark place and having some difficult thoughts i was always one of those people who wouldn't talk about how they are feeling and just keep it internal and crack on i now realize talking is such a powerful thing and it has completely changed me talking to my wife talking to close friends like rooty joe root of course it has really helped as uh as have two the professionals that I have worked with. Um, given what he's talking about and what he's been through, how how difficult is this a tour to go on? But both of you, Paul first. It, it, look, it, it is a tough tour. That there is no question. I, you know, I. I found the last tour to Australia really, really tough. I, I, I have to say, I mean, I, I think we played most of it as an England team. Almost, I described it as being in a bit of a fog. We went, Ben didn't come on that last tour, very well documented. He didn't come. We went under pressure. Um, we, we had a tough time. There was a lot of nonsense at the start of it. There were things that went on during the series. And it just felt as though... It feels as though the whole of the Australian public are against you from the moment you get there. And we were warned about that, but it was my first experience and it was seriously tough. Uh, and the, the, the series was effectively over in nine days. Uh, and... That makes it really, really tough. And as I say, it's not just on the field, it's off the field. It's the Australian public, the Australian media. It is a seriously tough tour and nothing can prepare you for it. I remember Andrew Strauss saying in the home series 2015, nobody should ever make their debut in an Ashes series. And, and pleasingly, England haven't got anybody making their debut in this series. Everybody has experienced some a fair amount of international cricket, but it is a tough series. You're going to need your Broads, your Andersons, you're going to need Root, people that are, have been there before that stand up and understand what it's all about. And, and and it will be tough for Ben. And you know, and I think the the support staff around Ben will have their work cut out to really look after him and make sure that he's right. But I don't believe England would have taken him or planning on taking him if he wasn't absolutely right because it is a seriously seriously tough tour. Carlos. Yeah, as as Farby said, it only happened to tour Australia once, to be fair, in international cricket. That was before he made my debut, and I remember there had been a massive article in the paper about how the West Indies weren't interested because they had their hands in their pockets. They never mentioned the fact that we were in Hobart and that we were from the Caribbean and everyone had hand warmers. And it's just the little narratives that they create um, the Australian media, they've been nice to me, so I'm not calling you out, Aussie media. But I'm just saying they can be very, very tough, um, especially for Ashes. They'll make sure that they try the very best to create a few narratives um, to throw a spoke in the wheel of the England team. But one good thing that may come out of it is that they may target Ben, um, which will take out of the equation then um, a lot of the younger players, especially that batting lineup. Um, outside of Joe Root, you can say that it's pretty vulnerable, um, as seen in a few of the home series this summer. But with Ben there, 
you hoping that 80 percent of the coverage is around him trying to attack him um and if he says he's ready he's the type of character that wants to be in the fight wants to be in the scrap um and you, you just look back at I mean, I don't want to talk too much football for obvious reasons, but you look back at <laughs> Jose Mourinho in his best days as a manager and his teams would play really badly and he'd pick a scrap with the referee, with the linesman, with the scheduling of the games and all of a sudden you forget about the bad performance, you nail him and it gives his team a little bit of a chance to recover and you, if they're looking on from where we are at now, I think that is one way that England can get into the series. With the focus being on Ben, Younger players not having the scrutiny that they may have had if he weren't there and then allowing them to just play the cricket without the scrutiny that comes with the Ashes series um, and with a very harsh Australian media. Uh, I think Ashley Giles has said, hasn't he, Paul, that they'll move forward cautiously with yeah. it. And I think that's the right word, isn't it? I think they will be cautious with Ben. But as Carlos said, you know, Ben wouldn't be going if he wasn't right and if he wasn't absolutely clear. I mean, he, he has been on an Ashes tour before. So, you know, he went on two Ashes series ago uh, um, and he found that a challenge. He got 100 in Perth, played brilliantly. Um, and so he knows what it's about to, to tour Australia. So he wouldn't be putting himself in that position if he wasn't absolutely ready. But, you know, Ashley's absolutely right. They, they will need to keep a careful eye on him, but not just him all of them you know that they've had a tough time and you know people that haven't been in bubbles you know would say well you know they're going to australia the sunshine it's fantastic why would you not want to go but it is tough it's tough being in a bubble um it, it might actually not be a bad thing because it keeps them away from the, the australian public who are not shy in telling you that you're going to need a bit of luck <laughs> and giving you plenty of advice on the street day by day so it, being in a bubble might not actually be the worst thing for them <laughs> let's get a uh, get an australian perspective shall we adam collins journalist and broadcaster joins us evening adam good evening i wonder whether i should defend the honor of my colleagues uh, off the top, <laughs> given the critique I'm hearing down the line. Uh, look it, it's it's uh, it's it's fair to say that it is hard to tour australia um it, it, i'm not going to dispute that point i'd caveat that by saying that uh, it can be pretty brutal on this side of the fence when teams tour here as well in an Ashes series. But yes, uh, yeah. the, the tit for tat, the uh, the phony war that is an Ashes series. I find the whole thing, to be perfectly honest with you, I find the whole thing quite cringeworthy, especially in the weeks and months leading up mm. to an Ashes series. The back and forth, the volleys and all the rest of it. I, I think it, it's an unedifying uh, part of Ashes cricket. I kind of wondered whether this year it might be a little bit different because of uh, all that's happened in the last 20 months, 21 months with COVID-19 and all that people have gone through around the world, whether we might be able to shelve that for a time. But I was absolutely wrong because it's begun in earnest. <laughs> has, has it already? I mean, you're, you are completely right to point out, by the way, this is a this is a two-way thing and you only have to look at the last series over here and, and the stick that, that Smith got and Warner got. And you can see, actually, in that, the... the, the um, documentary that was on Amazon, the mm. test, the the sort of slight surprise reaction of, of some within the Australian camp at, at the vitriol that was hurl, hurled at some of some of their players. So it is a two-way thing at times, this, and, and we should be fair and point that out. But do you think it, it has already begun in Australia as regards Ben Stokes in particular touring, or just in yeah. general? It's a good question, isn't it? I, I think with Ben Stokes, most people, and it's hard to know for sure, this news broke last night in Australia and, 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 we'll, and we'll see what happens, but there'll be a few elements to it. Farby's right. I mean, it's going to be full on, right? Uh, there will be certain segments of the Australian media who will um, talk about Embargo Nightclub and Bristol for the entirety of the two months he's in Australia. Make no mistake. That's mm -hmm. going to be part of it. However, I do think that the silent majority of Australians are actually chuffed that Ben Stokes is coming. Uh, it'll be a more competitive series because of that. We haven't had many competitive Ashes series in Australia in the last 35 years or something like that. You think 82, 83 uh, was a very competitive series. But beyond that, they've been fairly one-sided. Uh, and the fact that this time around, uh, Australia haven't played much test cricket in the last two years, but have been so strong at home, with the exception of India in two of the last three summers, Certainly against England, they've been strong. Uh, and, and I think that people will want to see England at their strongest. And the, the very fact that Ben Stokes isn't just one player, I mean, it's a cliche to say he's two players as an all-rounder, but he's even almost more than that in what he brings as a catcher, uh, a, a player to, to lead the team alongside Joe Root, all of his experience. And it would have just felt wrong if he missed two Ashes series in Australia 
in the peak of his career in 17-18 and again in 21-22. So I think there'll be a lot of Australian cricket fans who will be thrilled that he's reached the stage when he feels that he's fit and well enough to make the trip to Australia. Um, Paul, do you, do you take Carlos's point as well? That as much as you actually don't want him to be targeted for what he's been through, that even if he does garner the majority of the attention that as long as he has the support network around him to help him deal with that, that might actually not be a bad thing from, for some of the, the younger players who, who would have felt the pressure and the heat if he hadn't been there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I think Adam's absolutely right. that we, we all know, you know, we know what's going to happen. We know how he's going to be treated and we know the headlines that are going to follow him around Australia. And, and he'll know that as well. You know, he, he will absolutely know that. And it will. I think Carlos is absolutely right. It will take some pressure off. And, and the, the phrase he used, which I thought was really interesting, will allow some of the England players to get into the series because, you know, we didn't really get into the series last time. We prepared for a month um, before we played that first test match in Brisbane. And, and we started OK. And from James Vince getting run out by Nathan and Lions direct it from cover um, our, our series fell apart and, and you know we just could not get into that series and we, we kidded ourselves that we came close in Adelaide in the pink pool test but we didn't and as I say three days into the Perth test we were done and dusted and the series is over and it doesn't matter how well you play after that the series has gone so I, I think it's important that some of these younger players and one or two under a little bit of pressure in the batting order do find a way to get into the series as quickly as they can and maybe Ben is the ideal person to take the pressure off them. I, I don't think you'd connected to us at the time Adam but Carlos said this changes it from being 5-0 to the Australians to 4-1 <laughs> to the Australians. <laughs> Well, 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 we'll put it and, this and way. We won't, and, and we won't be inviting Carlos back just to, uh, <laughs> just to reinforce <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what I did earlier this evening? I, I put I popped on the highlights from the Headingley Ben Stokes miracle from 2019, just to remind myself that that's the greatest, arguably, and I think a strong argument could be made. It's the greatest innings ever played in the history of the sport. Um, you, you know, I, I don't think that's overegging it. Uh, that was truly extraordinary. He is a match winner uh, by any definition. What he did in the World Cup final as well. But you know, on that basis, what we know he's capable of. Will Ben Stokes fire at least once across five test matches? Almost certainly yes, provided he's fit and firing and the finger is at full fitness and he can hold the bat the right way and all the rest of it. But um, that, that I do think will level things up to an extent. Whether it will change the scoreline or change the, where the Ashes there and ends up at, at the end of five test matches, that's impossible to tell at this stage. But he is a true match winner. I mean, we hear that term used a lot, don't we? Match winner, theoretically, on paper. But this guy's done it time and again for England over the course of the last eight years and, and specifically the last time these teams met back in 2019. So, uh, look, the effect that Ian Botham had over Australia after 1981 when he wasn't playing his best cricket towards the second half of that decade was still so pronounced, thinking about the way that 86, 87 played out, for example, or 85 as well, uh, that the, both the, the aura of Ian Botham, even the 92 World Cup, 11 years later, Ian Botham ran through Australia in that competition. I wonder the extent to which the, the Ben Stokes aura uh, will affect this series uh, because they know, they respect him. That's the other thing here. The Australian public uh, may not, um, that they'll give him plenty of grief, but that's partly informed by the fact that they respect the fact that he's a superstar and the Australian team have a huge regard for Stokes. Uh, so, yeah, it, I mean, it, it certainly adds a wonderful element to this. It's such a great announcement today. And uh, on balance, uh, yes, it'll be, it'll be hard going for him, but, gee, the series is going to be so much better for his presence. That's a really interesting point, isn't it, Carlos? Because, you know, it could be that first test and England are, are 300 behind in their second innings and they're four wickets down. And, and all, the, all the common sense is telling you, as an Australian, we'll do this, we'll win this. But Ben Stokes is still at the crease and it's human nature, it's human nature that both crowd and team will be like, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, until, until he gets out, they never will think that the game... Um, mm. is done and dusted um, and that's a, that's a good point about aura um, there are some players that even if they are off form you just wonder when will be, will be their day and Ben Stokes is one of those players that with the bat he can do it as he did in Headingley um, but with the ball as well and it may not be, even be a match winning when you talk about galvanising um, a team it may not even be a match winning innings um, it might be a, ma a match saving innings um, where he bats the majority of balls with the tail 
um, probably bats a session and a half and take England out of the mar. And then all of a sudden, he walks back into that dressing room. The mood is lifted. The momentum has shifted a bit. Um, and then you get a century from somebody in top order along with Joe Root and then England in the ascendancy. So it doesn't always have to be a performance of the magnitude of what he did in Headingley because you'll come, it'd be very difficult for him to even come close to replicating that. That was sensational stuff. But the aura that he has um, along with a Joe Root, along with a Joss Butler um, to carry that dressing room, even a match safe saving innings or a match saving spell could do so much for the dressing room and change the momentum of a series. And and speaking of aura, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this point anyhow, Adam, even though it doesn't really work because most of the players are different. But you know, England could be arriving with the aura of being men's T twenty world champions as well. Yeah, yeah, that, that's right. They could. They, they put it this way: they're certainly more likely to win the competition than Australia are. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the, and, and that's not to say Australia are, are completely ruled out of winning the thing. But you look at form lines, and you look at the way that Australia have played in the, in the shortest form internationally over the last four or five years. It's unlikely Australia will win the competition. It's more likely that England will. And yeah, it's hard to to quantify what that will mean in, in Test cricket, but it'll certainly give them the wind in the sails if they do come there as dual world champions in, in white ball cricket, no doubt, much as it did uh, in 2019, I think, as well. O on paper, 2019, it, it was reasonable to say that Australia should win that series. And you press fast forward to the Oval five test matches later, and it was 2-2, and England did well to, to square that up at the Oval in the final test. And, of course, what they did at Headingley was, was truly extraordinary. So, yeah, I, I don't think it'll be a huge part of what happens in Australia, but it's not for nothing either. No, thank you very much, Adam. Appreciate that. Uh, Adam Collins, Australian uh, journalist and broadcaster. I mean, I know there isn't that much crossover, Paul, but it, but it would give English cricket an aura, wouldn't it, ahead of a difficult winter? Oh, definitely. It would be fantastic, wouldn't it? It really would yeah. to win a World Cup, be double World Cup um, winning side and take some confidence into Australia. And I think it would be fantastic. And then, you know, you add into that team people with a lot of confidence if they do win that and play well in that. And then you start to add in Broad, Anderson, Root, um, Stokes coming into that team. And all of a sudden, the confidence will be sky high. And they're, they're the little things you look for in a team. You look for those little moments that give you something to hang on to. And, you know, Adam's already talking us down. Carlos has talked to us about losing 5-0. Um, I, I, I don't think Australia are in such a great place themselves. I mean, let's not forget, there's been a lot of stick flying around for Justin Langer. Most of it, well, all of it, completely unjustified. But, I, you know, I've, I'm quite enjoying listening to it. You know, Aussie media getting into their own coach before the series starts. That's very unusual. This is a very unusual tour for England to be going on because Australia have hardly played any Test match cricket. The last big series at home against India, they lost. And, and Kohli went home after one Test match. Yeah. India had a lot of injuries and, and went on to win that series brilliantly. So there'll be a lot of things that the England team just quietly will be looking at and saying, this Australian team isn't as great as everyone thinks it is. So, you know, I, I think on balance, batting-wise, the two sides with a lot of unknowns in their batting. Bowling-wise, very proven. Batting-wise, a lot of unknowns.